This was not a bad shot. Was it a good shot? No, but was it a bad shot? Not at all. So look, Curry comes down the court and these past three minutes, he's been the reason why that this is a three point game with 14 and a half seconds to go and the Warriors have a chance to tie the game. So of course the Lakers are going to employ the, I forgot who said this, but the ABC philosophy, anybody but Curry. They double him on ball, Vando, and Reeves. They're completely fine with anybody else on the court taking this shot. Obviously, second priority is Clay. That's why Schroeder's over on the screen uh, and denying. And then they want Draymond to take the three. Of course, they want Draymond to take the three. So AD is not even guarding him. Now, the Lakers did kind of forget about Poole. That was, that was bad defense on their behalf. They forgot about him. This is an open shot. I know it's four steps behind the three-point line, but it is an open shot, and I think 75% of the time on these type of possessions where you need a three, you're not going to get an open look, let alone a wide-open catch-and-shoot one from somebody who's a high-level three-point shooter. Obviously, Poole's efficiency varies from game to game, but we can say that Poole is a great three-point shooter, and he gets a wide-open catch-and-shoot look. Now, it's probably preferable that he steps up closer to the three-point line, at least at the hash, because this man is behind the hash. So he could have stepped up around here, and that would have been a good shot, even though it is technically a three that's a couple steps behind the three-point line. So, given that it's wide open and it's a quality three-point shooter having a catch-and-shoot look, this can't be viewed as a bad shot, but given how far it is, it can't be viewed as a good shot either. Now, I think everybody just wants to hop on the hate on Jordan Poole train because of the down series he had against the Kings, and he's just a, a good guy for mainstream fans to hate on. So if you look at the feed, ESPN's gonna bag on him, Bleacher Report, Jordan Poole misses potential game-tying three with the shocked emoji. Like, this is just sensationalism at its finest by the mainstream media. Tyrese Halliburton, actually have the best reaction regarding Jordan Poole shot. Yeah, he's on the call with Channing Fry and Taylor Rooks. And Poole and Fry had opposite viewpoints on this shot. Off it though, he's got to get Anybody off else? What? Oh my god, he can't be Ain't serious. no way. Taylor, what's wrong with that shot, guys? Hey yo, what the What's wrong with that shot? Hold on now. <laughs> Can I see it again? Who's Can taking I see it? It's his <laughs> Where did he take that from? What do you want him to do? Take a dribble? Dog, just 10 seconds left in the game. But what if you're not going to get a better shot than that? You're going to be this. Two great points made by both guys. Channing Fry makes a great point. It's 10 seconds left, so they did have an opportunity to get a better shot, but it's no guarantee that you're going to get a better shot than a wide open catch and shoot three at the end of the day. He makes a great point as well. He says, what do you want him to do? Take a dribble? to the point where he risks allowing, I think Van, was this AD? AD was the closest defender, or no, Vando. <laughs> Vando passed up AD on this defensive possession. That's just how good of a defender and energy guy he is. Vando hustles, <laughs> AD doesn't even rotate. Vando's the closest defender. If he takes a dribble in, Vando can get a quality contest. Maybe LeBron can get a quality contest. So both guys are right in this case. Channing Fry saying, there's 10 seconds on the clock, maybe you can swing it around to get a better look. But Halliburton's also right in saying that there's no guarantee that you're going to get another wide open catch and shoot three in. He definitely should not have taken a dribble in because it could possibly have brought either Vando or Braun into the play. Also, nobody should be scapegoating Jordan Poole here. The Warriors lost this game with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. They were down double digits and it took a monumental collapse from the Lakers offensively to bring the Warriors back into it. So they shouldn't, re nobody should really be pointing the finger at Jordan Poole. He actually had a decent game, a really good bounce back game compared to his series against the Kings. Fingers should be pointed at the Warriors lack of inside defense. Like I said, because of sensationalism and clickbait headlines from mainstream media, you're gonna get a lot of coverage and reactions like this. Even my boy Kenny Beecham is hopping on the clickbait, the clickbait trail. I can't believe he took that shot. Now, 
Kenny tends to clickbait in his titles without actually believing or having a mindset along the lines of his titles, so I'm not going to jump to conclusions. And yes, I know they doubled Steph, but when you shoot the ball that far and you look like me when I played bitty basketball when I was six, <laughs> that means the shot was too far. That means you should have <laughs> took a step in. Let's take a dribble. You got a lot. Again, if he takes a dribble that brings Jared Vanderbilt into the play, it could possibly bring LeBron into the play. And we can't act like Jordan Poole hasn't hit shots from this far before. He literally did this in the finals last year. So he's capable of this range. Obviously, it's the clock winding down. Last uh, the third, but like he has this range. He does. Oh my god, of all people, Stephen A actually doesn't hop on the sensationalism train. They talked about how, and especially Jay Williams as well, they talked about how, you know, Draymond Green and Poole, if they were at fault for anything, it was getting up the floor a little bit late. Had Fair enough. But the shot itself should not be criticized, I don't think, to the extent that everybody is criticizing it. People say it all the time, man, it's a make or miss league. Sometimes you're gonna lose games because of a missed shot that you make seven times out of ten in practice that was the case and as a Lakers fan I'm happy with it and as I said before it was not this Jordan Poole shot that lost them this game and the Warriors know that Steve Kerr knows that they're not going into film study talking about oh our last shot execution is what lost us this game no it's not they weren't able to stop AD they weren't able to stop paint points in general and Kind of a running theme with the Warriors for the past two or three years, they couldn't keep the opposing team off the foul line. Long story short, let's stop scapegoating one player on one last shot if that's not what actually lost the team the game, and let's stop clickbait and sensationalism in sports media.